Hello, and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For this week's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the life of the NBA player Lorenzen Wright. Lorenzen was born on the 4th of November 1975 in Oxford, Mississippi to Herb and Deborah Wright. Herb and Deborah separated when Lorenzen was young, but both remained very involved in his life. Lorenzen split his time between living with his mum in Mississippi and his dad in Memphis. Lorenzen's father, Herb, had been a professional basketball player who had once competed in Finland and also tried out for the Utah Jazz. This no doubt inspired his son's love of the sport. When Lorenzen was seven years old, Herb was working for the Memphis Police Department when he was called to break up a fight at a local community centre. Later that day, in retaliation for his involvement in the altercation, Herb was shot in the back. He survived his injuries but was paralysed and would never walk again. Despite his injuries, Herb continued to coach youth basketball. Lorenzen played basketball for Lafayette High School in Mississippi. He then made the decision to move to Memphis for his senior year, where he played for the Booker T. Washington High School. During this time, he started dating the daughter of his coach, a woman by the name of Shara, who was five years older than him. As a sophomore, playing for the Memphis Tigers, 6 foot 11 inch Lorenzen emerged as a star player and achieved All-American status, a hypothetical American sports team composed of outstanding amateur players. At the age of 20, Lorenzen became the 7th overall pick at the 1996 NBA Draft and was selected by the LA Clippers. This effectively made him a millionaire overnight. A successful 13-season career followed, during which time Lorenzen played centre and forward positions for the Atlanta Hawks, Memphis Grizzlies, Sacramento Kings and Cleveland Cavaliers. From 1996 to 2009, he played nearly 800 NBA games and earned in the region of $55 million. He married Shera and they went on to have seven children together four sons and three daughters. Sadly, one of their daughters, Sierra Simone Wright, died from sudden infant death syndrome shortly before her first birthday. This led to Lorenzen setting up the Sierra Simone Wright Scholarship Foundation in her memory. Lorenzen was known to be very generous with his wealth, paying for friends and relatives to go to college, buying shoes for high school football teams, sponsoring sports teams and the like. He even set up a trust fund for Travis Butler, a nine-year-old Memphis boy who had lived with his mother's corpse for a month over fear that he would be sent into foster care. As his professional basketball career came to a close, his private life began to suffer. Lorenzen and Shara decided to separate, then reconciled and renewed their wedding vows. Despite this, their marriage could not be saved and ended in divorce in February 2010. Lorenzen continued to spend his money without care and, with records of finances haphazard to say the least, he soon fell into financial difficulty. He had been ordered to pay Shara $26,000 per month in child support and maintenance but fell behind on these payments. By this time he was living in Atlanta while Shara and the children lived in Collierville, Tennessee. His million dollar home in Atlanta, along with a second home in Memphis, were being repossessed. On July the 18th, 2010, Lorenzen left his home in Atlanta to visit his children. He and Shara had remained on civil terms and he left her home late that evening. Four days later, on July the 22nd, Lorenzen's sisters and mother filed a missing persons report. They were extremely concerned as they had not heard from him for several days and he had missed his sister's baby shower which he had been due to attend. This behaviour was particularly out of character for Lorenzen and his family feared that something bad had happened to him. When the police investigated, 
Shera told them that Lorenzen had left her house on the evening of the 18th with some unknown people. She said that he had some drugs and a large amount of money with him and she had overheard a phone call where he stated that he was going to flip something for $110,000. On 26th of July, a 911 operator reported a call to their supervisor. The call had taken place in the early hours of July 19th, and whilst the caller was talking to the operator, 11 gunshots could be heard on the call. For some inexplicable reason, this call was not reported at the time. It was ultimately established that this call had been from Lorenzen. Ten days after his disappearance, on July 28, 2010, Lorenzen's badly decomposed body was discovered in a wooded area outside of Memphis. Due to the level of decomposition, Lorenzen had to be identified by his dental records. He had been shot at least five times to the head, chest and right forearm, but had possibly sustained more gunshot injuries which were impossible to establish due to the condition of his remains. He was still wearing his gold necklace and an expensive watch when he was found. Shell casings from two different caliber weapons were found at the crime scene. Lorenzen almost certainly died on the 19th of July, but his date of death was listed as the date on which he was found, July 28th. He was just 34 years old when he was laid to rest in Calvary Cemetery in Memphis, Tennessee. As a murder investigation got underway, several different theories as to why Lorenzen was murdered and by whom were looked into. Lorenzen had sold two cars a couple of years prior to his murder to Bobby Cole, who was believed to have ties to Mexican drug cartels. This, together with Shera's previous statement and the fact that valuable jewellery had been left on Lorenzen's body, possibly pointed towards a professional hit. It was considered that Lorenzen had been killed after crossing a crime syndicate. Shera had also told investigators that three unknown men wearing trench coats had visited her house looking for Lorenzen around six weeks prior to the murder. The fact that his body was found just a few miles from Memphis airport could hint at his murder being a professional hit where the assassin simply left him for dead before boarding a plane and making a quick escape. Lorenzen's family and friends were adamant that these theories were incorrect, that being involved with drug dealers was just something that Lorenzen would not have done. Investigators also searched Shera's home. A neighbour had noticed that on the night of 19th of July, Shera and an unknown man had lit a bonfire in her garden. It stuck with the neighbour as that day had been one of the hottest days of the year. Several items were removed for further investigation. It is also understood that Lorenzen's former personal assistant, along with others who had known him, said that the police should be taking a good look at the actions of his ex-wife. Despite these lines of inquiry and a reward of $21,000 being offered by the state of Tennessee, City of Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies and Crime Stoppers, the investigation went cold. In 2012, two years after the murder, Lorenzen's father, Herb, started a legal battle with Shera with regards to the way in which she was spending her children's inheritance. As part of the divorce settlement between Lorenzen and Shera, she had taken out a $1 million life insurance policy to benefit his six children. However, within months of Shera receiving the settlement, it had almost all been spent. Shera maintained that the money had been spent responsibly, including $339,000 on a foreclosed home which was placed in the children's names. However, additional spends included $32,000 on an Escalade, almost $12,000 on a trip to New York, and $70,000 on new furniture. When Herb launched the legal action, Shera counterclaimed that Herb should be removed from the position of executor of his son's will. Despite an acrimonious battle, Herb and Shera eventually reached an undisclosed settlement and appeared to have mended bridges for the sake of the children involved. It would take another five years before any significant progress was made in the case. In November 2017, Jimmy Martin, Shera's cousin, who had been convicted of an unrelated murder, spoke to the authorities. 
he confessed to helping Sherer and a man by the name of Billy Turner to clear up the crime scene and dispose of evidence seven years earlier. Jimmy went on to provide details of a failed attempt to take Lorenzen's life in Atlanta and then told investigators the location of the murder weapon. It was in a lake in Walnut, Mississippi. Jimmy was not charged in relation to his part in the murder, becoming known as an unindicted conspirator. On the 5th of December 2017, 46-year-old Billy Turner, a landscaper and church deacon, was arrested at a convenience store in Collierville, Tennessee. Ten days later, Cheryl was arrested in Riverside, California. Shera stated that she had been a victim of domestic abuse throughout her marriage to Lorenzen and he'd had multiple affairs during their time together. These claims have been contested by members of Lorenzen's family. Both Shera and Billy were charged with murder and bond was subsequently set at $20 million and $15 million respectively. They both claimed that they were innocent and a trial date was set for the 16th of September 2019. If found guilty, they could be sentenced to life in prison. Shera's six children, two of whom were still minors at this point, stood in support of their mother, fully believing her innocence. Despite an incident where Shera stripped naked and used her clothes to stuff the toilet in an attempt to flood her prison cell before stating that she was going swimming, she was deemed mentally competent to stand trial. Two months before the trial was due to begin, 48-year-old Shera changed her plea. In a surprising turn of events, she pleaded guilty to the facilitation of first-degree murder and the attempted facilitation of first-degree murder, thus avoiding a first-degree murder conviction. On the day that she pleaded guilty, she stated that she had only come to this decision for and because of her children, stating that everything is not what it seems. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison However, due to the way that the sentencing works, and with time already served, she could potentially be eligible for parole after about seven years. Billy Turner's trial was still scheduled to go ahead in September 2019. It was then delayed until October 2020 due to late evidence being passed to the defence. The trial has once again been delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic and a new date is yet to be confirmed. I will update this story once the trial is concluded. Thanks very much for listening to that story. Please add any comments down below. And now it's time for Petty Crime. First up today sent in by Ray. This is his cat criminal, Napkin. Napkin's crime is to steal Ray's french fries and to still get belly rubs after a successful heist. Thanks Ray. And now Elizabeth from New York has sent in a picture of her three bullies. First up we have Zenyatta or Zizi who's three years old. She is an old English bulldog. Her crime is to run full force into the back of your knee and see if she can knock you off your balance and make you screech. Elizabeth says you can almost hear a giggle. Then we have Luigi, eight years old, another English bulldog and the head honcho. He just has to point his nose and people just bring him whatever he wants. He was originally taken in as Capone from a friend that was moving, but then when he was welcomed into the new home, rumored to be part of the witness protection program, he changed his identity to Luigi. Finally, we have lovely Lady Lolly, five years old. She might be a French Bulldog. They're not 100% sure, but she was adopted last year with no paperwork. She has amazing hearing, rumored to hear the ready whip cap being removed from a mile away. She will hear it. Thanks for sending them in, Elizabeth. Thanks very much for listening to the Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. In 2015, Shara Wright wrote a Roman Eclef book titled Mr. Tell Me Anything. It was a novel about a philandering NBA player. Goodbye.